we will discuss here the basic of electricity. For that, let us start from the basic concept of atoms. An atom consists of negatively charged electrons surrounding a nucleus that contains positively charged protons and electrically neutral neutrons. The protons and electrons are the key factors of electricity. Atoms are basic units of matter. Matter means any physical substance that has mass and volume. A chemical element is pure matter consisting of only one type of atom. Every element is composed of an atom with a particular atomic structure that defines it. For instance, the element aluminium is composed exclusively of aluminium atoms and the element silicon is composed exclusively of silicon atoms. Elements are ranked by their atomic number. We normally represent the ranks of chemical elements in a tabular form and the table formed for this purpose is called the periodic table of chemical elements. The periodic table lists the 118 known elements. The number of protons in each atom of any element is fixed and the number of protons in an atom is called the atomic number of that element. In a normal case, the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons in an atom. That means that once you know the atomic number of an element, you also know the number of electrons it has. Electrons travel around the nucleus of the atom in an area known as a shell. Shells are layered outward from the nucleus. Each shell can hold up to a maximum number of electrons. The innermost shell can hold two electrons. The second shell can hold eight. The third shell can hold 18. And the fourth can hold 32. For example, carbon has an atomic number six. Hence, it has total six electrons, of which two electrons occupy innermost shell and four electrons occupy outer shell. Aluminium has atomic number 13. Hence, it has a total of 13 electrons, of which 2 electrons occupy innermost shell, 8 electrons occupy next outer shell, and 3 electrons occupy outermost shell. Copper has an atomic number 29. Hence, it has a total number of 29 electrons, of which 2 electrons occupy innermost shell, 8 electrons occupy next outer shell, 18 electrons occupy next outer shell and one electron occupies outermost shell. The outermost shell of an atom is known as the valence shell or valence band and the electrons that inhabit that outer shell are called valence electrons. The more full the valence shell, the less likely it is that an atom will lose electrons when a force is applied. The less full the valence shell, the more likely it is to lose electrons when a force is applied. Let's compare two elements. As you can see from the periodic table, neon has atomic number 10. Hence, it has a total of 10 electrons, of which 2 electrons occupy innermost shell and 8 electrons occupy next shell. Hence, neon has 8 electrons in outermost shell or valence shell. That means it has a full valence shell, meaning that it is unlikely to gain or lose electrons. As we said, copper on the other hand has just one electron in its valence band, which can hold 32 electrons. This alone electron filling the valence shell is easily attracted away to a nearby atom. 
that has room on its valence shell. Here the electricity comes in the picture. Atoms that are grouped on the left side of the periodic table have fewer electrons in their valence shell and can serve as good conductors. That's because these electrons are loosely bound to their nuclei and can easily be separated from their atom. In other words, these elements allow electric current to flow, which is simply the flow of electrons. Examples of common metals that are relatively good conductive materials are silver, gold and copper, all of which contain just one electron in their valence shell. That alone electron is easily removed when electricity is flowing.